We have uh, author Alti Rao coming up who's going to talk about her book, Will Goondi Ever Come Home? Aditi Rao is a celebrated author of children's literature, known for her engaging stories that reflect cultural themes. She inspires young readers through her imaginative, na imaginative narratives about friendship and adventure, making her a cherished figure in this genre. Will Goondi Come Home is about Goondi, a lively young rooster from an irular fishing village in Tamil Nadu, and her best friend Muthu. Join them as they weave fishing nets, play hopscotch in the sand, and dodge Muthu's unkind school teacher. But when danger approaches, it's up for us to help Muthu find Gundi. Honestly, the book's called Will Gundi Ever uh, Come Home? Uh, Will Gundi Come Home? So I just want to know that. Will Gundi Ever Come Home? Let's find out, okay? Give it up for Alpi Rao, everyone! Okay, so I'm just going to experiment with this. Where do I point it? Here? Oh, superb. Okay. And if I need to go from side to side? It'll happen? It's okay, right, Preeti? Okay. So, I must ask you all to forgive me if I make a mistake while telling you the story. So, the whole idea here is for you to really enjoy the pictures and to listen to the story. So, what I want you to do is, use your eyes to do what? To look at the slides. And I will read you the story and I will tell it to you. Hey, so I have seen you somewhere before. You were at Funky Rainbow, right? Are you Tara? Are you Tara? No? Yo? Yo, Adya. So this is so nice to see a familiar face here in the audience. But hi, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm good squatting on the ground also. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm going to be presenting uh, my latest children's picture book today, and it's called Will Gundi Come Home? And can anybody tell me who you think Gundi is? It's a rooster. That's right. How did you guess that? You use your eyes. That's a rooster there, right? So is a rooster a boy or a girl? A boy. Perfect. This is great. Now, this is a story that's based on an actual little girl and her actual little rooster friend. Okay? But I'm not going to tell you about the actual little girl. First, I'm going to tell you the story of Muthu and Gundi. So you keep looking at it and I will read you the story. Okay? Can you see what's happening here? Where do you think this story is set? On a beach. Yeah, you can make out that it's not a farm, it's not on the city, in a city spread. It's actually the sea that they're looking out at. Right? Why do you think there's so much sand here? It's on a beach. So it's not a desert. Why is it not a desert? Because you just saw the sea. Remember? You saw the sea there, right? Yeah? And you can see shells. There are footprints. Can you see a rooster's footprints there? Yeah? And can you see starfish? Yes. And what else can you see? Somebody has left their chappal. I think maybe somebody was playing in the sand and then the chappal broke. So they just kicked the chapel off and they ran away from there, right? Straight into the water. And here, what do you see here? A rooster, yes, the tail feathers of a rooster. Now I'm going to start the story, okay? The people of Kulitamed are fisher folk. So what do they do in Kulitamed? What do they do? They are fisher folk. Every morning, early in the morning, Muttu's grandfather, whom she calls Tata. This is a story set in Tamil Nadu, right? So, Gundi, so Muttu's grandfather, Tata, what does he do? He goes off with all the other men of the village of Kulitamed. They go out in their katamarams and in their boats. So, what's a katamaram? Does anybody know what a katamaram is? It's a type of boat. But why do you think it's called Kattamaram? Yes, who said that? I have to tell you that without my glasses, I'm blind as a bat. So you guys have to draw my attention, okay? Yes. Somebody in the back also said that, right? That what do they do? They take the, the, the tree trunks 
and they tie them together because the tree trunk will always float on water. So when you tie it together and put it out on the water, what do you have? You have a floating device. That, yes, it's like a raft. Isn't that so nice? It's directly using something that's available to put it to a good use. Yes. It looks a bit like a kayak, you're right. So, that in the front is a katamaram, and sometimes they use boats also. And can you see what's on Tata's shoulder? Yes, that is a fishing net, right? So, they all get up early in the morning, all the menfolk, and they go off to sea. They go fishing. When it is time to bring in the day's catch in the evening, Muttu gives a whistle. What does she do? She gives a whistle. And who comes out? Guess. Goondi comes out. Goondi comes strutting out from Selvi party's backyard. Now, why do you think Goondi comes out from Selvi party's backyard? Why not from Muttu's backyard? That's right. She whistled. But why did Goondi come out from Selvi party's backyard? Now, this is a very important part of the story. Yes, because Gondi belongs to Selvi party, not to Muttu. He is only best friends with Muttu, but Selvi party owns him, right? Together, the two friends go down to the water's edge to receive Tata. Sometimes, Muttu carries Gondi in her arms. At other times, he walks. Gundi has a very fine walk. You see, he places his leg exactly one in front of the other and then when he moves, what happens? You know, he has his splendid blue-green tail feathers. They start to bounce jauntily. So, this is, this is a, a rooster who is very proud of his tail feathers, right? He's a very beautiful rooster. Can you see the colors that he has on him? Can you make up? Yeah? All, yes, rainbow colors, so many all mixed together, it's difficult to tell one from the other, right? Yes. Now, Muttu and Gundi are best friends. That, that part you've already guessed, right? Yeah? So, Muttu and Gundi are best friends and they are always together. Except when? Yes. Now, what happens every morning this poor girl, Muttu, has to get up and go off to school in Ponneri. So, Ponneri is quite a distance away, you know. It's not... Sorry? It's, uh, Ponneri is a little outside Chennai, but you're right. It's very close to Chennai. And Kuritamedu is a village in that district, in that taluk, actually, the Ponneri taluk. Okay? So, every time she wants to go to school, what does she have to do? She has to get on a bus and go all the way. Yeah? And that means that she has to leave Gundi and go. And you think that makes her happy? No? Would you like to leave your best friend and go off to school every day? I would hate to do that also, you know? So, they are always together, you know, except when Muthu is at school in Ponneri. And she hates leaving Gundi. And you know what's even worse? She really, she really hates going to school. And you know why she hates going to school? Look at the side, look, what the look at the teacher's face. The teachers are mean to her. And what does this teacher say? Every time Muttu comes near the teacher with her copy book saying, Miss, can you help me with this? Miss, is this correct? Miss, can you explain this? The moment she approaches her teacher, the teacher just screws, scrunches up her nose and says, Tali nil, tali, tali nil, means stand back, stand back, get away from me. Why? Why do you think? Not quite. Uh, no, no, Adya knows the story. I'm not going to give you a chance to answer. You tell me. Gundi, uh, Muthu doesn't have a bathroom in the village. Who spoke? Somebody put up your hand. Everybody spoke. Okay, superb. Absolutely right. So, what does she ask? She says, Talli Nila, get back. Anjana Miss cries, scrunching up her nose and waving Muthu away every time the child comes to her with a doubt. Don't you have a bath? She asks. 
We don't have bathrooms in our village, miss. Muttu explains. Eh, tell your amma to find you one, snaps the teacher. And when she talks about amma, what happens to Muttu? This happy, playful girl, Adya knows the answer to this. This happy, playful child goes very, very quiet. Okay? Why? She doesn't have a mother or a father. You're absolutely right. And when the teacher so carelessly talks about her mother, she's making two mistakes here. One is that there is no bathroom. So where will the child's amma find it? And the second thing is, there is no amma. So there's nobody to take care of. This little girl, Muttu, the only one who... Tata is there. Tata, Tata takes care of her. But this is something that a mother would take care of for a little girl, right? So Tata won't be able to do this for her. In the evening, Tata and Muttu make a fishing net. Muttu attaches small pebbles around the base to give it weight. Why do we give weight to a fishing net? Because otherwise, when the net comes down and catches all the fish and the prawns at the seabed, the water will come and you know the waves are very heavy, right? So what do they do? They push the fishing net up and then what will happen to all the fish that was trapped in there? No, they will all swim away. If the net that's supposed to be holding them, if it floats upwards, what will happen? All the fish will escape, right? So imagine if I catch you tightly and I say, you're my prisoner. And then if I let go of you suddenly, what will you do? You will run away, right? So all the fish are very intelligent, right? So what will they do? They will swim away. So what do, they, what do you have to do? Sorry? Even the big fish will fly, will swim away faster than ever. Because, yeah, you know, they have a lot more power to, to swim away, right? So what do they do? When they're making this fishing net, they put these small little pebbles on the side to make sure that the net stays down. Yes? They can't if the net stays down. But if they don't put the pebbles and the net floats up in the water, then they can get away. Just so try to think about it. Like try to think what I'm saying. It's the net the holes are very, very tiny. Not enough to let them go out. It's made in a very special way. So I'm going to show you pictures of the actual nets and how it's cast and everything. Yes. Possibly. Uh, if it's very tiny, but you have to know also that if you look at the nets, you'll realize that they are very, very small holes. So it's made very intelligently to make sure that the fish are not able to get away. Okay? I'll show it to you. When I show you the video, you'll be able to understand more clearly. Okay? Just hang on. After the story, I'll show you the actual videos. So in the evening, Tata and Muttu make a fishing net. Muttu attaches small pebbles around the base to give it weight. Otherwise, the force of the water will push the net upwards and all the fish will get away. With a flick of his wrist, Tata sends the net high up into the air. And just as it comes floating back down, Gundi comes along looking for his friend. And what happens then? The net lands squarely on Gundi's head. Squawks Gundi in fright. Muttu bursts out laughing because now Muttu, uh, Gundi is trapped under the net, right? And what does he say? What sound does he make? Yes, perfect. Yes. Tata quickly frees the bird. Gundi shakes out his feathers and runs off with Muttu to play hopscotch. Now these two, now they love to play hopscotch. So what does Muttu do? She draws those boxes in the sand. And then, Gundi is very clever at making flying leaps that land him smack in the middle of a box. It is usually the wrong box. But who cares? You know why? So Muttu, no, she just loves to see Gundi being very happy. So as soon as she lets Gundi win, Gundi gets very happy because she starts cheering him and clapping for him. And Gundi feels very proud of himself. So, he starts like, you know, prancing around and dancing a little jig because he's so happy. And that's why 
Muthu always lets him win. She loves to watch him prance around. After a long day of school and play, the fish corumbu and rice that Tata prepares in a pot over the wood fire tastes delicious. So they always eat fish corumbu and rice. Why do you think they eat fish corumbu and rice? It's free, no? Almost. Think about it. If they have to eat vegetables on the seashore, is it possible to grow vegetables there? No, right? Can you grow vegetables on in sand? It's completely dry. Just wetting the sand won't make it fertile. Then it'll just become wet sand. And within minutes it'll dry, you know? You know the sun is so hot there? That's why the people who live in this area, they are very dark of skin. Why are they dark of skin? Because it's a protection for them against the sun. Yeah? And it's, uh, it protects them from the sun, it protects them from insects. It's very, very good to have good dark skin because the... What happens in the skin? The pigmentation protects the body from harsh rays of the sun, from the UV rays. So why do they eat fish corumba and rice? Because when they go out to sea, they catch the fish. And then what do they do? They bring it back home and they just cook it fresh. Whatever they don't sell, they keep only what they eat that day and the rest they sell off at the fish market. Okay? So this is how they survive. So it's, it's much easier for them to cook fish corumba and rice than to cook vegetables. So only on a day where they have a little bit of money, they are able to buy a few vegetables and eat it. The rest of the time, their staple food is fish corumba and rice. So as they sit down to eat, what does Tata say to Muthu? He says, Muthu, don't get too attached to Gundi, okay? I hear that Talevar is, has asked to buy Gundi from Selvi party. Who's Talevar? Any idea? Who is this Talevar? The chief of the village. Yes, the chief of the village. Yeah? Talevar is the term for the village chief. And why do you think he wants to buy this beautiful rooster? Could be the reason. He has so many colors. He wants to? Somebody said something. Yeah? Possible? Because unfortunately most of the chickens that are grown are eaten up. Right? So what happens here? She hears him saying, don't get too attached to Gundi. Talaivar is trying to buy Gundi from Selvi party and Muthu gets really worked up. Why? She demands. Talaivar is the village head. Doesn't his family already have a large chicken coop? Why does he want Gundi also? Ah, now Tata does not even look at her. He's looking somewhere else. And he's stammering and stuttering and he's saying, uh, maybe uh, Talevar uh, thinks that Gundi will make a fine addition to his chicken coop. And he's looking somewhere else. And what's happening here? Muthu is catching on really fast that Tata is telling lies. Why? Because whenever Tata tells lies, no, he never looks at her. He always looks somewhere else and talks. So now she knows he's lying and now she starts getting very, very frightened because she feels that there's some danger coming up here for Muthu, for uh, Gundi. Talevar's son is getting married next week and there is to be a grand wedding feast. So can you all see where this is heading? Yeah? This is not looking good, right? For Gundi? Yeah? That night, that night, when all is quiet, Muthu slips out of the hut. Early the next morning, Tata finds her fast asleep on her straw mat with her arms tightly around Gundi. So she's gone into Selvi party's house. She's picked up Gundi. She, why is she holding Gundi in her sleep? What do you think she's trying to do? Eat her? Eat him? No, she won't eat her best friend. Any other? To protect him, yes. Gundi, to, to do what with Gundi? To protect her. To protect Gundi, absolutely right. So she wants to protect Gundi and so she picks him up quietly in the night and she just thinks that maybe by keeping him close when she sleeps, 
maybe gundi will be protected from talaiwar right so what does tata do when tata finds her asleep he knows now that if selvi party wakes up in the morning and finds her rooster gone what is she going to do she'll kick up a racket no she'll says who stole my rooster bring it back so what does tata do he quietly gets up and he picks up the rooster and he goes and puts him safely back in selvi party's backyard yes um she's fast asleep you know sometimes when children are small they sleep very deeply besides don't forget it's very early in the morning you sleep deeply yeah do you all sleep deeply yes it's the same person so this is a center it's a spread she shown two different incidents on the same thing so first you're supposed to look on this side when they're sleeping and then you look on the other side you see tata having gotten up and picked up the rooster and taken the rooster out put him safely back in selvi party's backyard and then what has tata done tata has gone away where does tata go every morning right tata has gone away fishing right tata is out fishing now muttu peers into selvi party's empty hut she is also away at sea she's also gone fishing and usually muttu really enjoys watching the village uh, the women of her village go fishing she really likes to see them fish you know why because the irular women they don't fish like the way all the others fish see see this this is how they fish one woman sits on the shoulders of another woman and keeps her down because of the weight of the woman on the shoulders the one who's actually inside the water stays low then the one who's inside the water starts to feel on the bed of the sea and all the prawns that are there with their hands they collect it they don't go out in katamarams they don't use fishing nets and they don't have boats either right shark won't come to such shallow waters usually and besides in these areas there are no sharks they haven't been sighted they are not native to this area okay so it's still safe but what will happen is if a woman goes down all by herself the water will it has buoyancy do you know what buoyancy is it'll keep pushing her upwards right so yes so you'll be bouncing on the water then how will you collect all the fish and the and the prawns so the weight of the other woman keeps them low exactly so when the weight of the other person is on your shoulders you find it easier and then what do they do they collect it with their hands and they put it inside these baskets which are made out of coconut fronds and those baskets are tied at their waist you see and because they are inside the water the basket also stays inside the water and because it's made with like it's woven like this there are gaps in the basket weave and so water comes in and goes out and the prawns and the fish they stay alive only at the end of the day when they've caught all the fish that they can catch when they come out of the water only then do the fish and the prawns die and they are sold fresh at the fish market in pulikat isn't that an intelligent way of doing it to keep the fish fresh and alive till the last possible minute okay now usually she really muttu loves to watch this but today do you think that she is interested any more not really right why because she is very very worried about gundi now she needs to come up with a plan to save gundi and i'm not going to tell you what plan she came up with because i want you to think of your own plans and i want you to read the book and to see what happens in the end but before that I'm going to stop showing you this and I'm going to tell you about the real Muttu and the real Gundi. So Muttu's real name is Lakshmi. She's this lovely little girl who lives in this Irular fishing village. Do you know who the Irular people are? Does anybody know who the Irular are? No. They are the native tribes of India, you know? They were the original people who lived in this land. They are the the Irular people, the original 
natives of the land. Okay? And these people used to catch snakes at one time. They used to catch snakes and sell them for their skin to the cosmetics market, to the fashion market. Not cosmetics, sorry, the fashion industry. Because they would make belts out of them, purses out of them. But when the Wildlife Protection Act came into force, they banned the killing of animals. So now what would they do? You're not allowed to catch wild animals. You're not allowed to sell them like that. So now how will they live? They do two things. One is they catch fish to survive out of the sea. The second one is they catch snakes and they help by removing the venom from the snake, the snake is kept alive. It's done very carefully and then after the venom is extracted, the snake is released back into the wild and this venom is sent off to the drug companies who manufacture anti-venoms out of it. So if a snake ever bites a person out there, what do they do? You rush to the hospital, they give you an anti-venom, it counteracts the poison in the original bite of the snake, right? So this is how the Irular people now make a living and this is how they are occupied. But one of the main things that they do in this area is that they go fishing, right? And so I want to show you, Preeti, there is a folder called Lakshmi and Gundi. Can you just show them the... So this girl really struck me as being a very lovely girl because she had a great connection to animals. It was amazing to watch her. She was so gentle and she was so, her energy was so open. She never troubled the animal. She never tried to grab it or pet it. She just allowed animals to come to her. And when I was doing research for another project, I met this little girl. And I want you to know this, that all the money that we get from this book is going to go to Lakshmi directly. Okay, to her and to her family. Because the thing is that Lakshmi doesn't have a mother. It's true that she doesn't have a mother and she doesn't have a father. And she lives with Tata only. Okay? Today, she's a girl of 14. And she had this best friend, this rooster called Gundi. So we will just show you the picture of Lakshmi and Gundi. But before that, let me till, till they show you this, let me ask, because we are running out of town, time. I just want to ask you a question. Do you know anybody like a Lakshmi in your class who's different in some way from everybody? You do, you do right? You told me the last time. Tell, tell the others also. There is this girl called... Uh, there is this girl called Vaidehi in my class. She, she, does, she doesn't know Kannada or Hindi. She only knows Malayalam. And she also knows English, but she has trouble in speaking. Like for, she says for already she says orderly. Like she doesn't speak English properly, but she knows and understands English. So how do the children in the class treat her? They treat her like she's from a different planet. So um, basically, we talk about discrimination. See what's happening to Muthu in school, right? If you were Muthu, would you like to go to school? Would you? Yes. You would? No, I know that you like to go to school. But if you were Muttu and the teacher was being unkind to you, would you like to go to school then? It makes it hard, right? Does anybody else have somebody like a Muttu who is different in some way? You do? Tell us. There is one boy in our class called Trivir. He doesn't bath and come to school. So the teacher doesn't like him. See, there you go. So this is another reason why the teacher would not. And you know in the government schools particularly, because the children don't always have access to toilets, you know it's so easy for us. You want to go have a bath, there's always hot water, switch the geyser on, or the solar power is working, so the water gets heated, just go and have a nice bath. On a hot day, you'll get cold water, and on a cold day, you'll get hot water. But this is not always available to people. Just think, we are, they're living on the seashore. So the only water that's available to them is the sea water. And the sea water is full of? Salt. salt. Is, it, is it easy to have a bath? And fish. And to add to it, people throw plastics, people throw dirt into the sea, uh, oil spills. So you have a lot of pollution. The water is very, very polluted. Plus, it is brackish water, right? It is salty water. So can you clean yourself using that? I'll just ask you. No, right? 
Not possible. So how are these children supposed to have a bath? And if they don't have a bath and if they come to school and if the teacher is mean to them or the other classmates are mean to them, then what happens? Do you think they'll ever want to come to school? So you should know that most of the Irular children drop out after the fifth standard and they refuse to go back to school. Do you want to say something? Is this a real story? This is a real story. I'll just show. Uh, Preeti, it's ready. See, this is Lakshmi. And this is a kitten that she had with her. Uh, Preeti, there is a... Just look at this child, how beautiful she is. Look at her eyes and... Can we see a, the pictures of Lakshmi and Gundi, please? See, look at her. Look at, the, look at the happiness on her face when she holds this little friend of hers. And look how comfortable the rooster is with her also. He was very colourful, but now he is not even colourful. Um, so, he is a different kind of rooster. But here what happens is that uh, the story is not exactly Lakshmi and Gundi's story. It's inspired from their friendship. And I'll tell you why I wrote this story. So when I had gone there to this to uh, Kulitamedu, when I had gone, and when I watched her playing with this rooster, I was absolutely fascinated by how much love the child had for the rooster and how comfortable the rooster was with this child. Okay? It's only after I came away, I came back to Chennai, when it struck me that I never asked her who the rooster belongs to. Now, when you have a best friend for a rooster and you see this creature as a sentient being, just a second, when you see this creature as a, feel, a creature with feelings whom you love and you nurture and you play hopscotch with, and yet he belongs to somebody else who might want to sell him and eat him, how helpless does it make you feel, right? Don't do, does, does everybody here know what that feels like? Does anyone know how it feels? Like, do you have anybody in your life whom you love so much but does not belong to you? Does anybody know of somebody like a dog in the street? Alexa, Alexi, right? How is Alexi doing? He died. Last time we had made a good wish for Alexi that either he gets better or that he goes away easily. So, Adya was very worried about him. So, we had all done a little thing for him. So, does anybody have... Anybody like that? Do you have a, a, a dog in the street or a, any kind of creature? Yes. There's a, there's a dog in HSR layer next to my grandparents' house. I keep, whenever I go to my grandparents' house, I meet them, the dog. And how do you feel that the dog is on the street and suppose you go back and find that the dog is not there tomorrow? Would you be sad? Yeah? I... In Fitzo, my badminton class, there's a dog that my teachers do not like. They have a stick and hit the dog's bum, but I like it. You know, I feel that when you're older, something good will come. Sometimes I feel that just uh, the, when we love a creature, something good happens for that creature. Love never goes wrong, no? I have a brother, he has a white color dog, it's a multi poo and I like it, but my brother always be mean to it. So have you tried to talk to your brother and tell him not to be mean? Yes. Does he listen to you? He doesn't listen? Yeah. So, do you, how, how, what do you do about it? I just tell his mom. Okay, and does his mother help the doggy? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Maybe he'll stop after a little while. He's too small to stop. He's, he's smaller than you are? Yeah. Then he might listen to you. You know, if he sees you being very kind to the dog, he might also learn to be kinder. Sometimes children just watch and learn. That's why I like writing books for children, you know? Because children always have the ability to see something good and something kind. I think as adults now, we've got used to seeing so much unkindness. But you guys should never get used to it, okay? Did Gundi always play hopscotch? Uh, no, that part I made up. But I did see them running around and playing. They were running after each other. It was great fun. They were playing running and catching and all kinds of stuff. Come.
How many children's books did you make till now? Nine, nine books, nine books. I have a couple of books for adults also, but I have nine books for children. Anybody had anything else to say? You know, we're running out of time. I wanted you all to do a little activity like we had done earlier, but I think we're going to be out of time, but I do have time to, yes. How many books have you uh, made? Um, how many books have you made? many days till you take for making one book? Um, you know, it depends on the book because I write uh, picture books and I write uh, chapter books and I write adult fiction. So it depends on the length of the book. It also depends on how much research I have to put into it. So it varies. You know, it can go up to one month. It can go up to six months. And the this story, the Gundi story, I actually wrote it in two hours. Yeah, see, because I didn't go chasing the story. I had gone to these areas on another project, and I was really working with the Irular children there. And when I saw Lakshmi, the story was, it just came to my mind. It was so inspiring to watch. It came actually when I came back to Chennai, and I, I'll come to you. Suddenly it struck me that I never asked Lakshmi who was the actual owner of this rooster, her best friend. And then I started feeling very anxious, like what will happen to Gundi? Like if she, if Lakshmi is not there to protect him or she's not able to protect him, then what will happen to this little creature? We have one minute left, so. How did you get inspired to write this book? Just from what I told you. Just from watching the two together. It was, they were very lucky. How many days did you take in total to write all the books? How many books have you made and how many days did you take for to make all the books? All the books I can't take, but I take 20 years. 20 years you took to make all the books. Plus a lot of other stuff that has not been published. Yes. Like are all of your books like inspired by royal story? Yes. Actually, yeah. Um, I think there's, um, uh, so if, if you guys are interested in writing, I'm just going to tell you this, because he wants to know if all my fictional stories are inspired from real life things. I think every, every story that we see here, because everything in life around us is a story unfolding, right? So when we see it, we are free to be inspired by it and make it into something else, to make the story our own by writing it or illustrating it or, you know, telling it to the world in whatever way we are most comfortable with. So even though my stories are all fiction, the seed of it is always something real, a moment that has touched me or struck me. Thank you all so much for coming. I had such a nice time with all of you. Okay? Bye.